Alright, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. Welcome to a surprising and unexpected live stream, but boy, since I made my video today, it's been uh, a busy one. There's been a lot of developments, there's been a lot of updates, as there always is when you come to a panicky end in the transfer window, and we're going to discuss all of that tonight, and also, it's a bit of a, it's a bit of a thank you, and a bit of a you know, it's a, yeah, I had, I had to come and say thanks. I had to come and do some form of live stream because, as you can see, a lot of people thank you, everybody that's in the chat saying congrats and all the rest of it. I appreciate it. Thank you. Um, thank you all for 45. Let me just pull up, let me pull up the screen. Pull it up. What's his name on that podcast? I can't remember what he's called on that podcast. I'll pull it up on screen uh, very quickly. Thank you, everybody, um, for 40,000 subscribers um nuts absolutely crazy and i couldn't not say thank you um with a little two minute clip in a video tomorrow uh, or anything like that i had to quickly say thank you um genuinely from the bottom of my heart to you all live and and giving it the whole big spiel um, don't worry, uh, I'm not going to get the waterworks gone and I'm not going to drag it out. I know that the majority of you have probably clicked on this, no caring or given a toss. The majority of you probably want to come and get your transfer updates and get to your bed. Um, but I had to come and say thank you because while today, earlier on when I made my video, we had about 120 to go. I didn't think that we'd, we'd hit 40k tonight. I said in my video today, I think we can do it for the deadline on Friday, the transfer deadline. Um... And he's went and smashed it today in less than, what, like four or five hours. We've crossed the 40k mark. Um, the nut, the, it's nuts, the support that you guys have given me. And I couldn't be more genuinely happy and thankful and just overall appreciative of, of everything that you just let me do on this channel. So thank you all so very much. It means even more now that it is my full-time job, you know, this is it now, this is the living, there's no more part-time Tesco, there's no more SAS in uni, there's no more degree to work towards, I now um, have my degree in journalism, but it doesn't mean that I want to suddenly run anywhere and work for anybody anytime soon, what I want to do is I want to sit here and work for myself, and I want to sit here and, um, and, and, and work for you guys, I want you guys to dictate my content and you know give me um, the energy and the the support to, to to put out content for you and for nobody else. Listen, who knows? The day might come where YouTube has to be, you know, um, an afterthought. Who knows what what way things will go? But as long as there is breath in my body, um, I will honestly keep making these videos and dedicate my full-time working bones to, to this because it's what I love doing. I love talking about Selic and I love talking shite. And um, as long as you guys are here to give me the support to do it, then I'm always going to be. So thank you all very much. We have crossed the mark. Let's try and get to the 50k mark as soon as possible, I suppose. That's the next big one. If you ever told me back, when I started making Celtic videos, I was, I was 16. I was in fourth year, I think, in school. And... Um, I never, I never thought that I would get to one k, let alone forty k. Now we sit here with what I am aware of being the biggest or the most subscribed to at least Celtic related channel on YouTube, um, which is which is something that's just absolutely nuts to me. Um, so it, it shows you how much faith you have in my my. Don't know why he's day to be honest, <laughs> but I appreciate it nonetheless. It's absolutely nuts, and obviously I've I've prioritised and 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 told you for for a few weeks now there will be a giveaway at forty k. Don't worry, there will be a giveaway at forty k. Um, I'm going to make sure we get that done. Um, I'm going to wait till Monday when the dust settles because obviously we're in for a busy week and I don't want to get it lost amongst the the, the shuffle. So Monday I'll try and get a giveaway organised after the Champions League draw, the um the, the transfer deadline, the derby and all the rest of it. I'll try and get the giveaway sorted. We'll get you guys a, a chance to be rewarded. But um, I it's it doesn't stop there. Doesn't stop at forty. But thank you. That's my spiel. Um, thank you for the couple of donations as well. By the way, Chris who said Ryan, how was your dinner? My dinner was lovely tonight. Thank you very much. I had a chicken chorizo spaghetti it was uh, it was lovely thank you to to ranny's rovers for the two saying no one deserves it more congrats my man yeah with everybody saying 
one one eight yeah and uh, thank you as well to Haki for 10 pounds very generous and congratulations on the big 40 bomb ryan won't be long until we're congratulating the big 50 hail hail hopefully we get to 50k before i get to 50 years of age uh that would be nice but thank you all for the donations thank you you're all very generous without you guys i couldn't do what i do news make it possible when you watch my videos and I get all those viewers in a day, and I get the donations and stuff, it's what keeps this going, because if it wasn't for, for you guys watching the videos, I wouldn't be able to do this full time, you guys have made my summer um, sustainable to live um, by doing this, and I don't want to be writing for anybody or doing anything like that anytime soon with my degree, I want to put my degree to use here right now, so thank you, and I couldn't do it without you, thank you as well to Patrick for the donation, just join, congrats on 40k, I, I couldn't appreciate it, and, and thank you to everybody for your kind words, um, through the chat, I would pull up every single comment if I could, um, but we'd be here all night, and I'm sure people want to hear me talk about transfers, but every single person saying congrats, and, and your best selling channel, and well done, and all the rest of it, I appreciate every single one of you, um, because you are just the absolute best, and thank you to John as well for the £3, um, you are absolute legends, right, let's, let's uh, I'll, I'll get all my thank yous again at the end, and all the rest of it, and talk to you guys in a bit more of a personal note, um, but for now, wow, what a day we are having with the transfer talk and with the rumours, the speculation and everything. This is not going to be the end of of this this week. We are going to have a hell of a lot more um, of, of this to talk about. If, if anything, I don't think this will be the last late live stream I do this week. I think we're going to be live numerous times to get end of the updates to catch up with what the papers are saying. News obviously starting to come out now pretty late. God, I don't even know where to start because we've got so many names to talk about. Um, we've got some updates to stories that we spoke about early t earlier to talk about. We've got a whole lot of ground to cover and in between I'm obviously going to shout out the people who donate. So thank you to, to Gary who has donated there um, with the, the £10 saying, there you go mate, couple of pints on me, congrats mate. And obviously the last sentence I'll let you all read so I don't get clipped and done. But I couldn't appreciate it more, mate. I will get a pint on you next time I have a drink. And thank you to Blake's. And you bring us all fans together just like Celtic. Listen, I try my best through the good and the bad. Through the good and the bad, I try my best to keep bring us all together. Have a laugh with it. You know, even if we are playing shite, um, I'll always try my best. Right. Um... Obviously, earlier on, and this is when I'm going to have to pull up my screen freeze, I've got a lot of tabs to run through, uh, usually I'd obviously have my own made graphics, but this was a last minute decision, so we're going to be jumping from tab to tab and, and things like that, I'm going to just try and open up my screen over here on the other side, earlier on we'd have put, well, that's a lovely deal with that isn't it, 10 banging burritos, how much is that? Nice, lovely. Um, we, we were talking about this earlier, about 3 o'clock this afternoon, uh, we got news through um, that Celtic had, oh well, this morning actually we got news through that Celtic had a bid rejected for uh, Matthias Kvisgarten of Bronby in Norway, uh, which was then updated to a, a news story broken by The Sun at 3 o'clock today. We should all have known when The Sun broke it. But The Sun broke a story today around 3 o'clock, and I put it in the video earlier on, that apparently Celtic were very close to making a deal happen with Bronby in Norway to bring Matthias Kvitsgarten to Celtic. Apparently there was a deal in principle around £6 million in total fee that had come close to an agreement, and it was, it was in the works, it was about to happen. However, we have had an update on that, and we can scratch it off the board, not in a good way, in a bad way, it looks as though the name is going to be gone, thank you Ian by the way for the five, you're always a legend mate, you're always here and I love that, every stream and thank you for the donation, I couldn't appreciate it more, um, we've had an update, so um, I'm going to try and bring up the, the right tweet, this was broken by Anthony Joseph earlier on tonight, I think roughly around yeah, 6 o'clock tonight. Anthony Joseph updated on top of that Sun story that we got earlier saying that after making initial inquiries, it's looking unlikely that Celtic will pursue Bronby forward Matthias Kvisgarden further in this window. They'd like to strengthen their centre forward options, but it is not a position of priority at the moment. Luis Palma can also play in this position. So it looks as though... Kovic's Garden is, is gone, he's not going to be joining Celtic in this transfer window anyway, I don't see him joining Celtic at any point if we're not going to try and capitalise on it now, but it's not happening, it's off, so my video earlier on, for all the 700 watching right now, if you 700 watched that earlier, scratch that, gone, within about two hours of that being uploaded, the script has changed, now, I wish that I kept in 
the original video that, I, that part of the original video I had in because I scrapped it when I got the update and I put a bit of the video going in in the video saying I don't think it'll happen I don't see Peter Lawwell or any of the Celtic board stretching that checkbook for a 6 million for a 21 year old striker when we already have Kyogo and I was I, I believed what I said but then I seen that story that the sun broke and I thought to myself okay right maybe Maybe we are actually going to do this. Maybe we want them that badly. However, I was right. We're not stretching the checkbook and we're not going for it. And one of the reasons is they don't really feel like a centre-forward option as a priority right now compared to other areas, which makes a hell of a lot of sense. Because I also put up a tweet through the Select the Thunder um, account on Twitter and I made a, an observation. And, you know, I'm not saying everybody has to agree with this, whatever I say, but I made an observation saying, like, Six million, when you think about it, sounded absolutely nuts for a centre-forward because that would suggest to me that that's a player who's coming in to start games and play a hell of a lot of football. But what happens to Kyogo? Because you can't drop Kyogo. He's, he's the, the main man. He is Kyogo. But six million doesn't suggest second fiddle. So it left me in a very mind-boggled place as to why there was so much being spent on Matthias Kvitsgarten. But, however, Anthony Joseph has came out and he has rubbished that now. That's not going to happen, reportedly. Um, and that's the latest update on that front. However, alongside that, we also got an update in the uh, the, the, the hunt for forward players on uh, Sidney Van Hoydonk. Familiar name? Because it's the son of um, former Celtic Pierre Van Hoydonk. Um, we did get a bit of an update on Van Hoydonk. Um... And apparently he has been on Celtic's radar. Once again, I don't think that this is someone who Celtic are going to try and capitalise on at this moment in time, especially if the centre-forward area is not a priority. Um, but apparently Celtic have had him on the radar. And, I mean, the name alone makes that attractive. Is he a player? We're going to talk about that in a moment. Thank you to Hale Hale for the 79. Appreciate that. Um, so, Anthony Joseph also followed up the update um, earlier on on uh, Kvitz Garden that Bologna striker Sidney Van Hoydonk is another player who's been on the radar this summer his future still remains uncertain um, Sky Sports Deutschland or Sky Sports Germany are reporting that Wolfsburg have made initial contact for the 23 year old who is the son of Hoops icon Pierre Van Hoydonk so he was obviously spoken about as well apparently Celtic may be keeping tag, uh, tabs on him I don't know anything about Sidney Van Hoydonk first time I've, I've, I've ever even realised he plays football and exists today, to be honest with you. I don't follow the Serie A as much as I'd like to. Um, it's been apparently 6 million rated, caught the transfer market. If we want to have a little bit of a look here, uh, as a fraught forward being 23 years of age as well, uh, then we can have a look here at his stats so far. So in his senior career, um, he, he has scored quite a fair few goals from the centre forward position, 60 goals almost in 130 appearances last season um, in the 22-23 campaign. He scored 16 for, uh, and, and 33, which is a good record in the Eredivisie uh, for Herenveen. Now, the interesting thing is they're talking about his, his, his future remaining uncertain. And Celtic, he's been on, they've been on Celtic's radar and all the rest of it, but um, he's barely played at Bologna. He's just returned there. He has made one appearance so far in the Serie A. So I did find it quite odd. I thought maybe with the appearance, he'd be maybe trying to get into the team or whatnot. But no, so future is uncertain. His goal scoring record isn't actually too bad for a, a young forward playing in senior football. You look at McBreda, he scored 23 and 70, scored 26 and 54, so that record improved when he got the move from Breda and then obviously went on loan to, to Heronveen. But when he went from Breda to Heronveen, he improved on that. He played um, some decent football by the looks of things. Um, at under 21's level, he's not scored. I'm not sure about under 18's or 19's level. Here we go, under 19's. That's not in senior competition right enough. Yeah, he's only played in the under 21s, didn't play in any lesser level. Two appearances, no goals. Um, his name is being mentioned though, so it looks as though Celtic aren't prioritising centre forwards at this moment in time, but there does seem to be players on the radar. So, listen, don't be surprised if Celtic do sign a centre forward before the deadline on Friday. However, I don't think it's anywhere near the top of the priorities. We all know that Celtic want to go out and they want to get a, a left-back, maybe. We're going to talk about a centre midfielder in a minute. We did hear about goalkeepers being wanted, but doesn't seem to have turned to anything. And, of course, we're trying to sign Luis Palma as well. Sidney Van Hoydonk doesn't seem like the worst shout to me. It looks as though he's got goals. He's obviously got a bit of a... Personal connection to the club as well with his father and a lot of fans will like that sort of factor to it. 
Um, it's one, I guess, to follow, but he must be on some form of centre-forward shortlist, along with Kvitsgarden. So Celtic are certainly looking in and around those areas right now, but it is not a priority, so I wouldn't imagine it to happen anytime soon. But that is the latest in terms of the centre-forward stuff. That is the latest in terms of the Kvitsgarden story. I think that's going to go right on the back burner for a little while. Um, but on that note, Celtic ain't done. Of course they're not done. They need players. They want players. And I see everybody in the chat right now saying we still need to get this, that, and the next thing. But it looks as though Celtic are beginning their talks to try and get their next signing in. We're going to probably deep dive on this guy a little bit more tomorrow, but let's jump into it right now because in case you have missed it this evening, Celtic have begun talks um, for another transfer. So I'm going to try and bring it up right now. Open my window again. Don't know why I even bother closing off. I'm running. I'm like more mouth here. I want to get to talking to you guys and get your points and questions in because this will be a longer stream, I think. Um, yeah, this was right before I went on the air. I went live at 10. And at 5 to 10, this was built on a little bit of uh, news coming out earlier on from Portugal. Anthony Joseph uh, has put the story into um, more updated terms for us. Celtic are in talks with Benfica to sign central midfielder Paulo Bernardo. It's understood the negotiations are centred around a loan deal with an option to buy. Bernardo, only 21 years of age, has four years left on his current contract, which means Benfica are looking for a sizable sell-on clause. This was originally broken earlier on in an article uh, from Portugal, the record of Portugal, the daily record of Portugal. Um, they put out a very short article earlier on this evening. I think this was around, yeah, five o'clock tonight. Uh, they put out an article saying that Celtic are looking to sign Paulo Bernardo on loan. The midfielder is not part of Roger Schmid's Penfica's plan for the season and is awaiting placement. This is a dossier that the responsible incarnates intend to solve in the last days of the market. They want to find him a move. They want to get him out. Uh, released by Jorge Jesus in 21-22. I think I think that means when he was loaned out, not actually released. Um, the 21-year-old was loaned to Pacos de Ferreira last January. He was integrated into pre-season, but without even a minute of use, it was clear that he didn't count to Roger Schmid um, and the Portuguese international as a contract until 2027, which we have already discussed. So this one looks as though there's a lot of sort of... Uh, I'm opening up the wrong tweets now. This one looks as though it's got a lot of actually... Uh, legitimacy and, and substance to it. I think that we might hear a lot of developments on this tomorrow and I think that it's one that's probably going to end up happening. Um, you know when certain things get to certain points that it looks like happening, obviously it all comes down now to the kind of deal that Celtic managed to get on the table here. They're talking about a, a loan deal with an option to buy with being 21 years of age, with being uh, with having four years left on his contract, I have a feeling Benfica might want a bit more than the usual sort of deal you try and work out here. Now, interesting point, option to buy, not obligation to buy, big difference. Of course, no obligation means they don't need to make it happen. They want a sizable sell-on. I think they've learned from the Benfica situation, uh, sorry, the Jota situation, of course, we got Jota on the cheap from Benfica with that option to buy being six and a half million pounds. We then sold him for 30 million euros, uh, which if, if Benfica even had 10% of that, they would have made three million euros. Instead, they made nothing. I think they've learned from that. And I think that they're probably going to put, if you were, I, I don't know the ins and outs of this so far, but if I was to take a pretty educated stab in the dark of what's going to happen here, I think that Celtic are going to have to have face an option to buy that might be 10, 12 million pounds. But that's the good thing about an option to buy, because if the guy's not good enough and the guy's not worth it, then we're never going to pay it. But if he comes in and he is worth it, who knows, maybe this time next year we're looking at a player that might break Celtic's transfer record. I think that the loan to buy, the buy, to, buy option from the loan is going to be quite high for this young man because of everything that happened with Jota, and I think Benfica have probably learned from those mistakes. If you want to have a quick, as I said, we're going to probably deep dive this guy a little bit more tomorrow, but if you want to have a little bit more of a look on Paulo Bernardo himself, of course, as we said, he was loaned out last season uh, to Pacos de Ferreira. He only made 13 appearances, but from the central midfield position, uh, he managed to get two goals and two assists. Uh, throughout the rest of his career, he, he's not really 
touched the Benfica senior side all that much in his career. He has made 26 appearances for them, but most of his work has came from the Benfica B side, uh, where he's made 30 appearances, scoring 7 and getting 5 assists. More of an attacking central midfielder, but mostly deployed, as you can see, 53 of his, his games have came from uh, the centre mid position. Uh, and only five coming from centre mid. So it does seem to be a little bit more deep lying, but certainly more of an attacking player, as you see. Seven goals, five assists, two goals, one assist, two goals, two assists, two goals. It does seem to get in amongst the goals when he is deployed in that position anyway. So, um, yes, they, they want to work something out. He is going to be definitely leaving Portugal this summer. He's going to, he's going to be leaving uh, Benfica anyway. Um, and it looks as though Celtic might be now a realistic option. We're getting all the dirty ads down here. Look at that, God. Uh, what's that they're asking? All right, us urologist. Uh, <laughs> by the way, very keen observation on this. Um, Twenty-one under under twenty-one for Portugal. Sixteen appearances, five goals. Not a bad record when you consider the quality in these sides. The Portuguese under twenty-ones, the talent that they produce at such a young age. Um, they certainly um, have talent in there. And if he's getting bag uh, goals in there and getting appearances in there. That can't be that bad. Only 21 years of age. We'll watch how this one develops as well. But as I said, four years left in this deal. 21 years of old. Um, and I think that he is going to be one that Celtic might have a lot of money on it. Should there be an option there to actually buy him. But it's got to be interesting to watch. It's been it's broke today. It's been out there today for quite a long time. Um, and Celtic are in talks. So, yeah. I think that, that this one might actually... I think we could see him being loaned into Celtic. Uh, I think that it would be a good signing, especially if you're preparing for the inevitable departure of Rio Hatati over the next 6 to 12 months. If we can bring someone like Paulo Bernardo in and if he can impress and he can show significant quality, because look how lucky we got with Jota, for example. If he can come in and show significant quality, then who knows, maybe you have the ready-made Rio Hatati replacement here. But that's getting ahead of ourselves massively, I think. First of all, we need to wait and see um, what happens in regards to him actually coming here, if it does actually happen. Um, but Paulo Bernardo, that's the latest name to be thrown in and around the rumour mill. Um... Do you know what? Out of two of these names, who Celtic are apparently looking at, Sidney Van Hooydonk and 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 Paulo Bernardo, I think they both look good. I don't think that Sidney Van Hooydonk will happen. I think that's just someone who's shortlisted at Celtic that could be an option one day. I think this one might actually happen. I think we could be seeing Paulo Bernardo become a Celtic player before Friday. Um, so yeah, and the last time we picked up somebody from the Benfica side that was was young and outcasted, that worked out pretty well. Can Lightning strike twice? That is the big question. We'll just have to wait and see. Uh, let me get a quick catch up with some donations that I missed out um, over the past five or ten minutes. And then we'll get into the last bit of transfer talk for tonight. And then I'll get on to you and your comments and talk to you guys for five or ten. Um, Connor McBride, thank you for the two pounds. Saying, the vids that get me through the Burns night feeds. I love that. That's great. I wish you the best. God bless. And uh, Jacob as well with 199 saying, love you, Ryan. Congratulations on 40k. I love you back. And thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you for the donation. Um, the last sort of story that came out t t tonight, uh, which I don't think is anything but smoke. I, I wouldn't get too carried away or too worried about it, but I've seen some people already reacting. We may as well talk about it as I bring it up on the screen right now. The last story is more to do with outgoings and it's to do with Matt O'Reilly and reportedly from Sky Sports once again, Leeds United and Southampton both interested in Matt O'Reilly. Um, listen, I, I would be stunned if Matt O'Reilly left Celtic for... Southampton or Leeds, I would be really, really stunned. Um, now, it's very easy to turn around and say, like, oh, they're in the championship, they, they might not have the money to throw big wages at them. I think that that still holds a bit of, yeah, true, could happen, but they're both sides who have still got the backing of big Premier League money in recent years, especially Southampton, who've been gathering Premier League money for over a decade now. They won't struggle with paying a decent wage to Matt O'Reilly, and they've just got James Ward-Prowse off the books as well, who would have been their highest earner. Um... Leeds as well, they will have a bit more money to play with as, and, and amongst that. I And I don't want to get my hopes up on anything. I, I would be surprised, I'd be stunned if Matt O'Reilly would leave the chance of playing European football, Champions League football this season, to play in the English Championship. Um, especially when there's no guarantee of Leeds or Southampton being promoted this season. I don't think that there's any guarantee that any of those two are destined to be back in the Prem next season. Um, it could be a bit of a fight down there. 
And especially when, if Matt O'Reilly keeps playing to the level that he is capable of playing, and if he appears to, to even half of that capability in Champions League football this season, a, a Premier League move is on the cards for him over the next one to two seasons. You know, like, he plays another year here at Celtic, he will be on Premier League radars. Um, he doesn't need a, need a Leeds or Southampton move. He should stay and he'll get European football. I don't. I think this is just smoke. And I, I think that it will probably stay at interest, to be quite honest. I really don't see it developing any more than that, especially with, with such a short time left in the transfer window. I don't think Celtic will be eager to, to accept any bids. Um, I think it would take a significant fee for us to part ways with Matt O'Reilly um, anytime soon. We don't have time to replace him now. I know we're talking about bringing in another centre midfielder, but it would still be a it would be a calamity. It would be disastrous to let a player of Matt O'Reilly's quality leave the club with three days left in the transfer window. I think it's smoke. I don't think it's going anywhere. But just for context, there is talk that Leeds and Southampton are both looking at Matt O'Reilly. Um, but as for the news and as for everything that's broke tonight, we are pretty much done on that front. We've pretty much covered everything that's came out since I made my last video. Uh, just a brief recap in case that you have missed anything um, over the course of the last half an hour almost. Um, Matthias Knitzgarden, God, forget his name already, off, not happening. Paolo Bernardo, Celtic are in discussions to loan him in from Benfica. Sidney Van Hoydonk, son of Pierre Van Hoydonk, is on Celtic's radar, but that is about it. And Matt O'Reilly, uh, there is interest in him from both Leeds and Southampton in the English Championship. So that is your four stories to kind of recap on. Uh, don't worry, the, the, I imagine all of these stories will have more build-up and more to them and more context over the next three days and every step of the way we'll be on the channel talking about it all. Oh, right, that was a mouthful. That was a mouthful to talk about there. Uh, we're nearly on the half-hour mark. Um... So I, I'm going to talk to you guys for a bit and get um, some of your thoughts um, to, to kind of finish off the stream and just to also say thank you for the 40,000 subscribers that we've passed. I'm, I'm going to try and very quickly open the live sub count again. Apologies. I'm going to see how many subs we've gathered through the stream, if any. Um, so I'm going to have a very quick look. Um, it's not up. Oh, there we go. We're up to 40,031. Like during this stream alone, we've had about 16 uh, subscribers or so which is which is still nuts to me so if you haven't like and subscribe it would be much appreciated let's keep us at the top just like Celtic um right let's get some questions in um so is goalkeeper not a priority asked Mark McQueen now there has been nothing final that's been published to suggest that a goalkeeper isn't a priority however I'm going to go out on a limb and say no that it's not um, I I think that Celtic are probably going to pass on that unless Benji Seacrest leaves. And even if he does leave, I think they'll bring in somebody who's a backup. I don't think they've got time to go out and sign maybe the first choice keeper that we all kind of crave. And that's that's not news that I want to, you know, be confident on because I would love us to go and sign a goalkeeper, but I just I don't think that it's going to happen. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. I'm seeing a question. Where's Cal? I seen Cal. Congratulations, sir. Thank you, Cal. Legend. Um, thoughts on defenders coming in in the next few days? Well, it's all quiet on the Western Front or the defensive front, I should say. Um, the only kind of player that we heard about was the boy for Southampton, who's now moved to Qatar. So that's off the cards. Um, so, and just to kind of follow up on that with with um, Mokiel. I hope I've pronounced that right. Do I think we'll get a left back? Maybe Merlin. I hope we get a left back. Do I think we'll get one? We just need to wait and see. Now, tonight we've had names thrown around willy-nilly. I'm assuming that that might be the case again tomorrow and then we might have more of an insight as to whether or not we are looking at players in these positions that we all desire to see. Um, but we're going to have to be patient with that. I can't go out on a limb and say, yeah, I think we will because honestly, without anything there to suggest that, my, I don't want to get my expectations up. Um, but we need to we need a centre half, even on a six month loan deal, just to plug the gap for the next eight weeks. We can't go eight weeks with two centre halves. We can't. It, we we simply can't do that because you're a scales or, or a lag and injury away from an actual 
beyond, beyond we're already in crisis so you're lo- talking beyond crisis we need to bring someone in um the only problem that we have with all of that is what the hell is going to happen with registration because friday's the registration deadline as well don't forget it's not just the end of the transfer window you've got to have your champions league and your premiership squads fully registered finalized who's going to make the cut and who's going to be left out nuts to think about but uh, that's not my headache for now they, they better be thinking about that back at celtic park in lennox town um i actually wanted to answer this question because i like it and there's a hell of a lot of comments by the way so sorry if i don't get to yours but don't worry we'll be streaming a lot this week we will be we will be live numerous times so if you have your questions you'll get the chance to hopefully ask them at some point um kevin asking out of all the videos i've done what's been my favorite to create well done in 40k thank you kevin and very quickly i i, I, I never really mentioned this video because it was the first season I ever covered Celtic, at the end of the Invincible season, the Invincible treble winning season, I created, and if you've not seen it, feel free to go back and watch it, Um, I don't know, I'm actually going to go and find it, because if you're bored tonight and you want something to watch, this is still to this, and I made this when I was 16, and I still, it's shocking that I don't feel like I've topped it since then, Uh, if I can try and find Ryan118 2016 17 season review, if I can find it, I can find it. This is the video that I am most proud of that I've ever made in my whole time doing YouTube. I spent weeks editing this because I was 16 at the time and I was just really getting into things. This though was that is the if you've never seen it, it's got 14,000 views. Um that's the video that I'm most proud of that I ever made, and it was a full month by month recap over 10 minutes of the entire Invincible Treble season, which still to this day is my favourite ever season following Celtic um that is the video i'm most proud of um and if you've not seen it feel free to, to go and watch it when this is done I, I guess but uh yeah it took me weeks i had it all prepared for weeks and i was updating it month by month uh, towards the end it was yeah it was uh aye it was a, it was a slogger um of a video to make um right let's let's get a couple more questions and then and then i'm gonna then i'm gonna finish up for tonight because everybody wants their bed and it's half past ten and we will be back all week, so um, I will be doing one, of course, I'll be doing a Deadline Day live stream, and we'll get a lot of questions, and a lot of time to recover, and everything there, and, and finish off the window, um, Tell says, why is bringing in a midfielder on a loan move, uh, when the back four is a terrible way at the moment, um, I, I think that, I'm hoping that they're just looking at both areas, because I don't, I don't really mind, Apparently Fabricio has just tweeted about Celtic, have a look a minute. I don't really mind them going in for a loan move in a centre mid because I feel like we could be doing with reinforcement there. But yeah, absolutely, defenders should be the priority. Um, I think a lot of stuff from the papers might just be breaking now. Jamie McGinnar, that's not anything to do with Celtic. Apparently Fabricio has just tweeted about Celtic. Is that true? I'm going to go and have a look just now and see if it is. Um, I don't know. I don't see anything in the last half an hour anyway. Um, But yeah. Um. Yeah, I'm going to wrap it up there. Uh, finally, just to wrap it up, actually, uh, Murray, who says, uh, "Big congrats on the 40k. Keep on the good work as always. A wonderful start. Seeing names for centre half and a left back being linked before the close of playing Thursday. I would hope for tomorrow, Murray. I really, really would. Um, will it be tomorrow? Maybe that's wishful thinking. Um, but I." Right, I'm going to wrap it up there so it doesn't drag on too long so people can go back and watch the stream in the entirety. We will be back all week. So thank you to everybody who's been watching. Thank you so much for 40k. And if your questions haven't been answered and I've not managed to, there's been so many. Um, I, I I will get through as many of you as I can on the, the streams this week. So, I Right, got to be busy. Busy, busy, busy. Get to sleep and wake up with rumours in the morning, I hope. Right, thank you all. God bless. Hail, hail. Cheerio.